Kashi my Mac to last week. I wonder if you remember, and I've given you like some visual prompts here, right? I wonder if you remember seeing this probability density function. It was just an example. In fact, we talked about it even before we had this you know, firm idea in continuous random variables. Um, I introduced it as an example of a discrete probability distribution that exhibits characteristics of a continuous distribution. So it's like if, if you've got a continuous model that fits that, then use that because it's really good at predicting things, right? Now, we're going to use this as our way to sort of explore this idea, which we've talked about in like broad um, brushstrokes, but not in detail. Okay. So uh, let's think about a quick example here. Okay. If I asked you off of this probability uh, uh, density function, right? What's the probability, for example, of um, you know the number of heads face up being uh, I don't know between ten and twelve? Right, the probability of it being between 10 and 12. Okay, we've established. Okay, well, you can integrate to find the area underneath this function, and that'll give you the probability. Yeah, does this, does this ring a bell? Okay, so we would form an integral. Okay, what would its boundaries be? Uh, 10, to 10 and 12. Right? You're like those two numbers there. They're the only ones I've got. 10 and 12. I actually gave you what this particular function was. It was like e to the power of some you know weird crazy stuff. But let's for now just say whatever that function happens to be, and then you integrate with respect to x, and then definite integral, you get an answer out. That number will be your probability. Okay? One thing we didn't really address, though, is that often we don't state, or we don't ask for probabilities, where you've got two neat boundaries. I could just as easily ask for um, a probability like this. What's the probability that the number of heads face up is greater than or equal to 14? This would be a pretty normal thing to ask. The only problem is, with a question like this, you can't neatly convert it over to here, right? Like, I'm, I think to myself, I need to form an integral, right? Um, I think, okay, well, x is greater than 14. So I start at 14. Let's, let's put 14, like, around there, okay? And then I start working on an area to the right of that because it's, it's greater than, yeah? So I start to get, and I'd love you to put this on your diagram as well, I start to get an area that looks like this. But I sort of run into this little snag in that my integral has a lower bound, but it has no upper bound, right? At least not one that's just handed to you straight out. So the whole point here is there is a domain restriction on this probability density function. It's, I haven't said it, but it's kind of implied in the situation that allows us to fill in the rest of what's going on. Um, I can't, at least with the tools that we've got at the moment, I can't just integrate to forever. I need to have some end point. Think back, what, what is this situation modeling? How many coins do I have? Have a look, right? We, we said 20 coins, right? It was just why my x-axis stops at 20. So in fact, here at 20, there's an implied endpoint to my integral. Does that make sense? Even though there's, it's, it's not here, you kind of have to read into it and say, oh, well, I'm not going to go forever. I'm going to go from 14 to 20, and then I'm going to integrate like I did before. And uh, clearly, you can imagine here that you know, if this is what it means going to the right, you might have the same thing going to the left. Do you agree? Um, if uh, pick out a point, like say, um, uh, well, actually, let's just, let's just leave it at 14, right? If I wanted the probability of x is less than or equal to 14, yeah? Let me get a different color up. So um, I'm now going to say well, I'm going to start integrating from somewhere over here and then go to 14, right? So you're going to end up with this area on this side. Again, there is a start point implied by the situation, even though it's not told to you, right? What's the domain restriction that's relevant here? Zero. Like, it's, it's, I can't have negative numbers of coins that are our heads face up, right? So therefore, over here, and this is quite common, right? You'll often go from zero to some sensible value. Um, that zero is going to be the bottom of my integral. I should say the, um, the lower boundary. So from naught to 14 of that function. Okay, so we can generalize this, right? You're going to have functions which are defined in some kind of area, right? So if we generalize this rather than you know, this specific situation, if you've got a probability density function that lives between some values, A and B, if you're asked for the probability of something in the middle greater than that or something in the middle less than that, right? Let's just pick out a spot like, say, over here, right? So if you have some given value, any value you like. I'm, I'm just going to call it value. Okay? Can you form for me the integrals that correspond to the probability 
of, um, this is an x-axis over here, of the x value being less than that value. What would be the integral that I form? Three minus. Okay, yep, so I'm gonna, here's my, here's my, um, my uh, integrand in here, whatever that function happens to be. But the boundaries are the main thing I'm interested in here, right? Where am I going to start? Value. Value. Am I going to start? Have a think. This is less than the value, right? Start at a. Ah, good. I'm, I'm going to start at A. Maybe again, this is why I put the colors here, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're at my endpoint already. You're, you're a step ahead of me. So maybe if you want to color this into your region here, right? Start point, end point. So I'm going to go from A up to my value. Does that make sense? So would you call the value x? Um, now, this is interesting, right? Like, we're kind of drowning a little bit in alphabet soup here because you've got so many different pronumerals flying around, especially when you generalize to some, like, who knows what function this is? So I'm not going to call this x because it'll actually be a number, and I'm using x in all kinds of other places. So um, we use x a lot, right? So I'm going to try and avoid overusing it. In exactly the same way, what if I looked at the other side? What if I wanted the probability of being above that value. Yeah, fantastic. I'm starting from the value and I'm going to the right, but I don't just go forever. I just stop at a point, right? So it's from the value up to B. Now, it's important that you kind of like think about this explicitly because these domain restrictions, like I said, they don't just get handed to you. Like you might not get a uh, notation that says, oh, you know, uh, this guy is defined A is less than X less than B. They won't always explicitly say that to you. You might have to read that out of the situation that you get sort of described to you, right?